All right. A recurring theme in this class with these phase diagrams is that they represent what exists at thermodynamic equilibrium, meaning you let it sit for as long as it needs to reach its final lowest energy state. Well, sometimes that doesn't happen. Here's an example of that. Let's say we take this phase diagram, right? Some atom A and B, and it's a simple binary isomorphous solid solution diagram. We're going to cool it down at 50-50, and our initial composition is 50 atomic percent B. So there's just as much A as there is B in the liquid. Now what's going to happen when we reach this temperature right here? If we let it sit long enough, right, our very first solid will start to precipitate and it will have a very different composition. It's way over here at like more than 80% B, right? So from the liquid, which was an equal mixture of A and B, a bunch of the B atoms had to leave the liquid and condense and be a mostly B solid, right? 80% B, right? So that, that requires diffusion, right? If we had a mixture of A and B atoms, right? where some of these are B's and the others are A, right? Like so. All these B's had to diffuse over to get to a new solid which is mostly B. Right, that's our new solid that's forming. It requires the diffusion of atoms. Now since this is in a liquid state and this is a solid, which one do you think is going to allow diffusion to happen faster? It's definitely a liquid. Atoms can move in a liquid phase much faster than a solid. So if the reverse happens, if we need these B atoms to move out, to move out of the solid once they've bonded and formed a solid, that's going to be slow, right? Diffusion in a solid is going to be much slower than in a liquid. So think about what happens. So let's go to our next temperature. We cool this thing down, right? Now we're at that point. Okay, our solid, thermodynamically speaking, should be clear over there, and our liquid should clear be over here. So think about it, your solid is still rich in B, but lots of the B needs to leave, right? You've now got something closer to a 50-50 mix again, so you've got to be pulling some of these atoms out of the solid. Well, what if your solid is kind of big and diffusion is slow? Then you start to get the scenario where you don't get thermodynamic cooling. So the new line that it follows under non-equilibrium cooling might look something like that, where this is the actual composition you get at that temperature. You expect it to be here, but it's actually right there. What this also leads to is coring, right? So you can see these in these structures. You see these structures, how they have like this gradient from dark to light, light gray there, going that direction. There's these gradients. That's because, let's say that the B atom was the dark atom. As you formed more and more solid, so as these things grow, thermodynamically speaking, you need to let it sit forever for these B atoms to move out of the compound and A atoms to diffuse in. And since it's slow for the A atoms to diffuse in, and it's slow for the B atoms to diffuse out, you end up with these gradients and concentrations across your microstructure. And that can be good or bad. It, you can just use that to your advantage. That's an engineering tool. So instead of letting this thing sit really, really slowly while you cool it down, if you cool it down a little bit more quickly, you will end up with these non-equilibrium coring microstructures.